Hello and happy Tuesday. I almost said happy Monday because it's my first day this week of creating with you guys. I'm feeling much better today than I was yesterday, that's for sure. And thanks for your concern. Um, go back for a checkup for my wrist tomorrow and I hope it's all good news um, or at least better news. Um, everything is looking well where the surgery was. Uh, just some other areas near it that aren't looking so great, but we'll see what they have to say about that uh, tomorrow. So I am excited to kick off Dawn Earlbeck's virtual stamp party today. Dawn is just the sweetest. So if you have been to my in-home stamp camps here in my home, um, you most likely have met her with the dark curly hair and, uh, and her sweet personality. So if that uh, rings a bell like, hey, I know who that is. I sometimes like to connect uh, names and faces for you guys when I'm doing a virtual party to see if that kind of um, uh, helps you to figure out maybe who this party is for. Because um, sometimes you're all here in my home, but don't always remember whose names are whose and such. Hi, Carol. Hi, Diane. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Lori. And Lisa, too. So um, I'm excited to show you guys. I was excited yesterday, but just did not have the energy to follow through with it. But I'm so excited to show you the new Hey Chick product. So Stampin' Up! came out with a Hey Birthday uh, stamp set. And I said, just maybe wait if you can, because uh, there's going to be some dies coming out. So I kind of um, put that out in my monthly newsletter in in. January I think and so um, so yeah so I thought well let's show you that now that we have dies to go with it hi Donna hi Jill um, so here's today's card with the fun chick so some of these dies kind of interact together with um, the hey birthday chick as well as the chick dies yeah they're very similar names so I just have to go now which one am I using and such too so I just love the simplicity of the blue background today and I'm going to show you how to use the blending brushes to make that fun background and then um, the big shot's going to get kind of a workout today uh, thank you guys and um, normally I don't really like putsy cards but then I always tell you guys if I'm doing an in-home party for you guys or if it's stamp camp sometimes there's that one project and I'm not going to do tons of projects that are putsy but sometimes just there's that one project that is so worth it and today I feel like that is one of those projects that's so worth it to be a little putsy but yet not terrible and so um me going through the work of kind of how did she make that stick where and why um, hopefully will help you if you decide to make a card like this um, then you'll know kind of the best um, sticking products adhesives and such to use to help you with that or at least how I'm doing it today and you might see that and go oh I won't do it that way and you would do it your own way and that's okay too so let me get started on today's card I'm going to put um, down my iPad so that way if I see questions from you guys um, or comments then I can catch that and hopefully help you out with responses so let me start by showing you the card again so the blending brushes are what does the light blue background here and there on that and I love just that soft look and how it ties in with the balmy blue um, card base and that's just balmy blue ink with the blending brushes um, and so I will show you, actually, first I'll show you uh, the Hey Birthday Chick stamp set. If you like to follow along, um, it's from the mini catalog, page 52. And um, with that, there's all those fun new images there. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure I thought I missed a comment, but <laughs> it was just Linda. Thank you, Linda. Okay, not just Linda. It was Linda. Thank you, Linda. Okay, so um, those are the new birthday chick um, images, and Carla Voss is joining me, and Carla is excited about the birthday chick stuff because I know she really liked the first um, stamp set, Hey Chick. So, um, so this is the one that's in the catalog. The one that's not in the catalog is, um, the first one, Hey Chick. So the one I just showed you is Hey Birthday Chick, and then there's Hey Chick, and then there's dies that coordinate with each. So like I said, I'm going to be showing some images, um, or dies from each of these sets. So, uh, forgive my scribbling, but I'm just going to uh, show you this. If you get my monthly emails, this was put in my monthly email, all of this information. 
if you follow my page, this was shown last week. And I think after I make today's card in the comments of my still shot, I'm going to post this flyer again, just so you have that as a reference too, if anybody needs the prices or the code numbers or whatever, just because um, these products here, this these first two and this one are not even in the catalog they're in no catalog the only thing in the catalog is a stamp set so i want to be sure that um i have prepared you guys with information so um so yeah this is the one uh hey chick that everybody fell in love with in 2017 during celebration and um how fun that it's celebration time again and now they made dyes to go with this and even more um fun dyes so i almost feel like back in my days when i'm playing with barbies and and um, all the little pieces of everything to put together. So, um, oops, that was ink. I thought it was a little fuzz. I want to make sure that's rubbed off my finger before I get started. So um, there's really not a lot of stamping, but just a lot of pieces to put together. Um, so I think I'm going to start first with stamping the chick and then running all the die pieces through so that you guys um, can kind of see how that all works. Um, Hey there, Ginger. So this is the chick, and uh, this is the chick from Hey Birthday Chick. So actually, I'm, I'm using none of the stamps today from Hey Chick. I'm using them from Hey Birthday when it comes to the stamped images. So when you see stamps, they are only from that stamp set today. Okay, so we have that chick. How cute is she? Just love her. Love her, love her. She looks like I do since COVID started, and um, any kind of bowl of popcorn catches my eye or any kind of extra snack, that's me. <laughs> okay, so these are all the dies that I'm using today. So this one's going to cut out the fun chick and then the fence and the corn plant, oops, and then all these little corn pieces here. Um, this one comes from Hey Birthday Chick and the rest of these come from Hey Chick. So um, the chick dies has the cute fence, the corn pieces, all of these fun things um, here. And so they cut out the chick images. Um, there's actually three um, little corn husks and three pieces of corn. And what a fun sign, what a cute coop. And then you can actually like sponge and make your own background like chicken wire with that. And then there's some eggs there. So this one is the chick dies. Um, like I said, I, I will also show you that flyer, but sometimes just to see the sizing, um, this is the birthday chick dies. So all I've pulled out from this one is um, that big chick here, but then you've got images for all the little chicks with the balloon, and that's a cute little chick you could just cut out with yellow paper and a little bow tie, a feed sack that I think looks adorable, and some little scratch scratches to make it look like they're scratching in the straw, and then this banner too to make it look festive. So um, kind of hard to pick and choose. So um, I decided, you know, that's just too hard for me to pick and choose, so I ended up just getting both sets right away. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start by running through my chick here. So I'll get that lined up and just do that one separate right away. And then I'll kind of show you the other pieces of cardstock that I use to do all the other little pieces. So like I said, this one might take a little extra time. Sometimes I never know. Whoops where that die went. I don't need it right away yet. Um, sometimes I don't know if it just takes me a while to putz and make something or if it really took that much time. So I'm going to run uh, my cornstalk. I'm going to use a shorter one. So I'm just using a little piece that I had in my stash of pear pizzazz and just made sure it went up to the top. But if it didn't go all the way to the bottom, that was totally fine. So that just comes out like so. Um, so it's kind of a little skinny piece. So I'm just going to unstick it from my cutting plate there. And then I'm going to do that same exact die. Um, so that was pear pizzazz. This time it's going to go on garden green. And I'm going to use the whole stock. And then I'm going to add a couple of the husks here um, from the corn plant. So now I have three dies going through and actually why not just stick even more on so I'm going to take a little strip 
don't we all have like half inch strips of every color um, that Stampin' Up! has when we cut down like our cards um, to a four by five and a quarter, then we're always left with that. Um, and then I just have a chunk here of crumb cake. So I just wanna make sure that that scoots on. So that I'm putting the fence piece. So, so yeah, when you see like you can just cut that all in one shot, then it doesn't seem like you're constantly running through so that works out well too thank you nancy i'm so excited about this like i could just like say hey leave me alone in my room and see you guys in like two weeks because these dies like you could play with forever <laughs> so okay and they cut out super easy like all these pieces i'm just kind of uh, making sure that nothing's stuck in the dies but the dies and the paper just kind of separate right as they go through so I'm just going to do that before I set it aside just so that when I'm when I start assembling my card I know I've got everything so I've got that and all those little pieces there and you guys side note I love to garden I kind of sometimes have a love-hate relationship with my garden, but I do a ton of gardening. Like, my deep freeze is full of, like, vegetables that I worked really hard to secure all summer long for my family. And so, now that I haven't been able to cook, it's been really fun to, like, the other um, night pull out a um, ice cream pail full of cabbage tomato soup with uh, carrots and everything that I had made um, based on what's in my garden. So, this is kind of right up my alley, and uh, my husband been farmed so uh, to have that my son has a seed uh, selling business so I think there's just so many um, elements to this that will be fun to work with okay let me move my stamp set off my chair here and I've got my camera down so you guys almost know the drill of I get pretty serious if I move my camera down to color in the tick so this is kind of the only focal point that gets special attention and color. So I'm taking um, my Poppy Parade. Um, this is the Dark Poppy Parade. Just wanna double check my camera to make sure that's in a good view. And so just a quick little trip up the front there um, with the Poppy Parade and just a little um, tip on the top there. And that's all we're gonna use for Poppy Parade. And then Pumpkin Pie is gonna come in and just color lightly the little beak. So that's all we're gonna do with that. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is use Crumb Cake Dark and Light and start filling in with that. Hi, Julie, good to see you on here. So with this, I'm gonna do more um, of the crumb cake up near the top of my chick and just kind of go along the sides and such. And then when I get about halfway down, I'm just gonna kind of thin out my line a little bit, but still go outside here. And here I'm just gonna kind of swirl so I catch the edges and some of those pieces. And then I'm just going to kind of do this over anywhere where Stampin' Up's artist has done little, can I say it, chicken scratches. <laughs> <laughs> they've done chicken scratches on their artwork. I'm going to highlight it with the darker of the crumb cake blends here. So that just kind of circles around. So I'm going to highlight or hold that up a little closer. So literally that is what it looks like so far with the dark blends. And then um, it's going to make coloring and the rest of it super easy. And because it's a broad area today, I'm going to use the brush tip instead of my normal or usual um, bullet tip. And then I can just kind of pull that color by going back and forth, pulling the sides in. And it's gonna look kind of goofy. So as you're doing your own, you might go, gosh, that does not look like how hers turned out. But you always have to remember with blends, if you walk away for a few minutes, how it actually looks when you're finished coloring compared to five minutes later can be really different. So let me get um, the card here again. So you can see like there's hardly any marks, but you can see where I've highlighted those darker spots versus when it's pretty freshly colored. Um, those colors are pretty um, light and dark, not blended as much, but then it kind of settles down a little bit on that one um, as it sets 
too. So that's important to remember. Okay, so let's do something fun with my blending brushes. So actually I'm going to just get some scratch paper here on top of my scratch paper. How is that for overkill? Um, let me open up my Balmy Blue ink pad and I think I'm going to leave my camera at that angle so you can kind of really see. And I know Lisa, last time I used these brushes, you had asked me, um, like, uh, how, like, how, um, hard am I pushing and such? So these bristles, let me take one. I've been using them and just rewashing it, but this one, I kind of just want to leave just to, um, just to do this because <laughs> they're so soft. So, um, you can see they're very, very compact, lots of bristles in there. Can you even hear that? Yep, so, okay, so there's a lot in there. This is a lighter color, and I noticed, like, um, like I thought I was pressing down that, like, shoving it in there, but pressing down pretty firm, and um, I just noticed it, it really was so much softer than some of the other darker colors I've used. So just by seeing that, you can see it's really soft. And then, of course, if I get my finger in there to get it um, to push down a little bit more, it's going to give you more. And there I feel like, okay, that's almost a little too light, but I'd way rather have that and come back to my ink pad. And I start off in that same, so here, if you've never seen me use my blending brushes, I go in a counterclockwise circle like that. If you feel um, like this is more natural to go that way, go that way. So if you're going counterclockwise, then start on your scratch paper counterclockwise and then just come over to whatever you're going to put it on in that same direction. So if you are going clockwise, just go on your cardstock clockwise, so whatever. And that's just going to give you such a soft look. And so I wanted it a little bit darker on the bottom and a little bit lighter at the top. And that's all I'm going to do with that because um, it looks nice and light. But like anything, the, um, the more you start adding pieces to it, you're like, oh, I'm glad I did just only that much. We don't want to overdo it. So um, this is ready to go on my card base. And like I said, the color of ink and the color of my card base is the Balmy Blue. So I'm going to take my um, seal here and just give that a little walk on the back here of my white cardstock and kind of just center that like so. Okay, so now where the is where the fun piecing uh, comes together. So let me start with this fence here. And how cute is that? I used this last week um, in Kim Naz's virtual stamp party, um, this fun fence. So it not only cuts it out, it gives it that fun design um, embossed right in there. So um, with this, because it's a little piece, I'm going to get out my mini dimensionals here. And I'm going to put that right in the center. And it's almost like these little mini dimensionals um, are meant for this fence. And I often say that, like, half joking, but we all know Stampin' Up! kind of almost like puts things like this together um, we think oh look at that and they're like no we did that on purpose like that so um, so I'm just gonna put three dimensionals because that's gonna get popped up and I'm going to set that aside and then um, I'm going to start with just the pear pizzazz um, corn here and I'm going to take my glue dots and my take your pick tool so um, I'm just going to pull off a glue dot here, and I'm going to attach that at the bottom, the glue dot there. And so with that, um, the fence is going to kind of cover up the bottom of this corn plant because it's going to be in the background. So I don't care if it looks like it's like you can see it or will be able to see it. And then I'm just going to put this glue dot right at the top, kind of where that tassel is. So if you didn't grow up on a farm, that's the tassel, guys. <laughs> okay, so, um, and I'm just taking my Take Your Pick tool. This is one of my favorite things is to be able to take, like, my um, Take Your Pick and just kind of mend and mold that um that glue dot just so that it can kind of get it out of the way so it's not so obvious. So that one's all done. Okay, and next I'm going to um, do that same thing with the darker and this color again is my garden green. So I'm going to just take and put one little glue dot right about there in that first kind of joint of that and then um, that's all I'm going to do for this green one for now, okay? 
So, like I said, you guys were in for a little bit of a lengthy, like, how to put things together, but, like, you just sometimes want to know that part of it, too. Okay, so glue dot on the back of this green husk, and then we can put this, um, and this is so saffron, if I didn't tell you guys that already, the so saffron corn, so that kind of fits right in there, like so. And then um, same thing, I guess I could have cut back time because these are identical and done one of them ahead of time for you guys. Um, but they're both done the same, okay? So glue dot in the back of the green and then I'm just going to press my ear of corn in there like so. Okay, so we've got that. So now I'm going to start doing some of the assembly and you guys are like, finally, yay. <laughs> okay, so I've got my um, corn piece here and this is the lighter of the uh, of the two. Oh, and I did cut my white um, 3.75 by 5. I wanted more of the blue to show and more of this to be like a frame for all the accent pieces that I'm putting on. So um, I'm just going to take my light green corn stock and just kind of press it down where I put those two glue dots. And then we have this fence with the mini dimensionals and that's all ready to go. And I'm just gonna kind of put this on over here. And then you can see I covered up my glue dot that was holding down that. So that worked out perfectly, didn't it? Love it. Okay, and then I'm going to um, actually take a couple more glue dots here. I'm going to glue dot this to my corn plant here. I'm going to take this um, second corn and glue dot this up into this area. Oops, here. And kind of stuck to my paper a little bit. I just don't want it to tear. So we have this. And so now what my dilemma was, not that it was a huge dilemma, this fence is popped up. So this needs to be popped up too, or it's gonna be goofy. So getting back out my mini dimensionals quick, I now have enough of a spot or space to um, put a couple dimensionals where they're not gonna show. So between the corn plant and my little ears of corn, um, I can put two dimensionals, um, one and two, and this glue dot's gonna stick to my fence so it'll all be the same height, like so. So I'm just going to kind of, actually wanna kind of hide this. I can see it's gonna show on my fence and I don't like my glue dot to show. Hi, Shirley, thanks for joining in. Okay, so there is that. So 25 years later, I have a corn plant for you guys. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, so there it is, popped up. But look at the dimension, look at the character that adds to the card. It is super fun. So I hope you guys think it, that that was worth it to see me piece that all together. And I know there are some of you out there that are like, oh, all my cards are like that. I love to just sit and piece together and putts. So maybe every once in a while doing a card that's a little bit more tedious that way um, is an okay thing for those that have, you know, we're not all the same crafters. So that works out great. So the chick that I colored in, the birthday chick, I'm just uh, putting some dimensionals, some regular size dimensionals behind that chick and just kind of tucking her barely behind the fence here and she's going to be tending her garden. So this is me in the summer, like always out in my garden, like literally. So now we need some um, little sentiments here, and I'm going to make that part be really easy. So I'm um, using my Memento Black ink pad. I'm going to take a couple strips, and if Lisa's still working, she'd be like, yay, Belle's using up more scraps today. So this is Balmy Blue, which is the same as the card base, and this happy birthday is from the birthday birthday chick so I just love that font it's just so cute with that stamp set so that's um, happy birthday and you're still a spring chicken so I just have this whole um, piece or strip of blue here I'm just gonna stamp that on the bottom and no fussy cutting no die cutting I'm actually gonna take my uh, scissor my regular scissor and see if I can just eye that straight across 
Yay. And then this um, same thing, I'm just going to trim that a little tiny bit closer and then trim that too with my scissor. So now this is going to get a couple dimensionals and the regular dimensionals just kind of barely fit on there like so. This I'm going to flip over and just put a couple dimensionals on there too. So then those are ready to add to my card as well. So let me bring the card back over here like so. So I'm going to have my hey birthday just kind of going a little bit at an angle there. Hey birthday. And then my you're still a spring chicken can kind of go a little bit at the other angle like so. It's kind of fun that I can incorporate um, the balmy blue again on the front even though it's a card base. Because it's such a light blue the black ink shows up really well on that too. So, um, so that works out well. And then for the inside um, I'm going to kind of just take my blending brush a little bit like so and just going to see, I don't think there's a lot on there, but I just kind of want to add a tiny bit of the balmy blue um, just in the center here. Not a lot. So people will be like, is there ink or isn't there? But I think it'll just be that subtleness that will carry through. And then I want to stamp out in black. Let's celebrate you. Um, and that's just going to obviously take over that blue. It's just kind of fun to have that be part of um, that with the blue. So um, let's celebrate you. And then I just took the confetti pieces and switched it on each side like so. You can see how that blue in there is just kind of fun to do for the inside of the card as well. Um, and then I'm going to tack that down. So that's going to be the inside. And normally, you guys, I'd be like, okay, so what am I going to use for my embellishment for the front? And I think there is definitely enough going on on the front side of the card that I'm not going to add any pieces. I could put like one little ladybug, I guess, if I wanted to. But I love how the paper really steals the show by um, turning into like it's amazing sometimes how with dyes we can turn just cardstock into all these little tiny pieces and such. So that is today's uh, card number one for Dawn Earlbeck's virtual stamp party. Thanks, Shirley. Let me get my tripod flipped around and camera and such. So yeah, it is Tuesday. And so that is her first card. So Wednesday will be card number two. Thursday will be card number three. Uh, so that will be her three crafting sessions for the week and then Friday I will start in right away with a stamp camp uh, sample and uh, that'll be card number one for February stamp camp. February stamp camp will be all sorts of things. I know January I really focused on love and heart and pinks and anything like that so February is going to be just a whole variety of thank yous, birthdays, everything, just in case you're wondering like um, about ordering and such that will give you uh, that kind of opportunity to think through maybe what you need in your stash or what you're looking for too. So, um, but yeah, this week's mostly about Dawn. So she'll kind of conquer the week with my first uh, three days of crafting and such. And so I'll see you guys um, probably late afternoon again tomorrow. So thanks so much for joining in. Have a good evening.